Let's bring back our panel. Brad Blakeman Skyping in from Washington and Amy Kramer from Atlanta. They've decided to stay with us and we're grateful for that. Amy, we're going to look at some polls from this week. Donald Trump roaring back after being down an average of seven points in early August, now neck and neck with Hillary as the co-founder of the Women Vote Trump PAC. You heard what Ed had to say about Democrat candidates. Does that give you confidence that women will find their way to Mr. Trump in this race? I do think that they will. Overwhelmingly, married women already support him. But um, when you start looking at jobs in the economy and health care, and we all know what's happening with Obamacare right now, uh, and education, and then, of course, our national security, when you talk about those issues, J.D., I think women will come his way because Hillary Clinton will be four more years of the same. And it's not good. Uh, he is the one that has the solutions. And the polls show that more people have more faith in him on the economy um, than Hillary Clinton. I believe they have more faith in him on terrorism, too. The, they're tied or right there at, with each other on immigration. Um, and then she, for some reason, is better on um, foreign policy because she was secretary of state. But I do think that they, that women will come his way and I do think he'll win. Uh, Brad, yeah, Brad, Mr. Trump got some good news uh, from veterans and those still wearing the uniform, uniform of our military. As a matter of fact, uh, the latest NBC News survey monkey poll shows Mr. Trump with a substantial lead among vets and those serving in the military. Almost 20 points, 19 to be exact, 55% to 36%. Brad, if you were advising Mr. Trump, how can he build on these positives and increase that margin even further? He's got to reach out uh, immediately to those constituencies where he has to make a difference. And that's with single women. That's with minorities. Every vote we take away from Democrats is two votes. So I would encourage Donald Trump to continue to do what he's doing. His outreach to the African-American community spills over to independents, uh, not necessarily um, the minorities he's speaking to. So he has to understand there's got to be a method to the madness. It's all in the math. It's all in the numbers, as you know, J.D. It's uh, 270 electoral votes. We know the states that we need to concentrate on. We know where our deficiencies are. And if we're not able to gin up our base and get our base out at 90 plus percent and then augment that with independence, single women, minorities, um, we're just not going to win. So he needs to do that. He needs to. And if I were him, I'd start putting his children in battleground states and have them live there to Election Day. Ivanka in Florida and, and Donald in Ohio and Eric uh, in Pennsylvania and out in um, in in Iowa. These these people have to be there every day and not just now and go. we need to amplify this so it's it's the trump family politics where a kid adopts one of the swing states and moves there for the duration of the campaign as like a super surrogate yep absolutely so amy would you welcome that well, yes, if that's what we need to do to win, absolutely. We have 62 days, and we should have already started. I know that people are out working already, door knocking and whatnot. But, yeah, it's not too early. And if that's what it takes, J.D., let's do it. I lived on a bus for three weeks at a time. You know, other people have done the same. So um, it's not going to kill anyone. No, it's not. It, a campaign is a campaign. It is a battle of sorts. But uh, yeah. but we uh, don't want to give short shrift to those who have worn the uniform of our country. And that brings us back to what Mr. Trump had to say late this morning in Philadelphia. Let's look and listen. We want to deter, avoid and prevent conflict through our unquestioned military strength. As soon as I take office, I will ask Congress to fully eliminate the defense sequester and will submit a new budget to rebuild our military. This will increase certainty in the defense community as to funding and will allow military leaders to plan for our future defense needs. As part of removing the defense sequester, I will ask Congress to fully offset the costs of increased military spending. In the process, we will make government leaner and more responsive to the public. So, Brad, he is laying out an honest-to-goodness plan. He cannot be attacked for not having some sort of vision. 
Will this likewise help make the difference with undecided voters? You bet. The more specifics he gives from his own uh, podium, the better it is. The more he surrounds himself with people who are known commodities in their fields, the better it is. So, yes, I would encourage Donald Trump to speak to the issues, speak to the policy, surround yourself with people who the public respects, put it out on your website. And, yes, he's moving in the right direction, no question. Amy, it's been said good policy makes for good politics. You hear an amen from Brother Blakeman there. Do you concur? Amen. I think that the more specific he can be, that uh, people will appreciate that. That's what they want are specifics. They want answers and to understand exactly how he's going to do these things. So I think as long as he keeps doing that, it's a great thing and it will help him secure victory in November. About a minute 30 remains and there's something else we need to talk about, specifically Politico, not exactly friendly to Donald Trump with a piece today detailing five reasons why Hillary could be blowing the election. Some of the reasons listed are as follows. Trump getting better at being scripted. Clinton made her campaign exclusively about Trump. Trump voters don't seem to care if he flips or flops on immigration. Uh, the Clinton Foundation feels like corruption. I'd change that. Heck, it is corrupt. And uh, finally, Mrs. Clinton kept a low profile while Mr. Trump had the stage to himself last week. Amy, to that point, Hillary was raising dough and then she was resting. The whole health question continues to hang above her. It's partisan, but yes, it's also practical. Does she need to fully release all of her medical records? Yes, J.D., I think she should. One, because of injuries she's had in the past. We, we deserve, the American people deserve to know what kind of health their commander in chief is in. Um, and also because of her age, you know, not to discriminate against her age, but she is older. And so I do think that we have a right to know. Actually, I think both of them should release their health records. So everybody get the records out on the table. Brad Blakeman, it is worth noting, we made the point with Michael Reagan last night, Donald Trump is actually older now than was Ronald Reagan when he was campaigning in 1980. And yet nobody associates age with Mr. Trump. Uh, pardon the pun, will his strength be his health? Will that become his strong suit if he releases it, those records? It, it certainly is because, look, we've watched uh, Trump uh, get up in the morning at 6 o'clock and be on a, a talk show at 6 in the morning. And we've seen him at not, the same day at 10 o'clock giving a speech. And, and between that time, he, he's been working the phones and being at events. The guy is absolutely uh, incredible. And he's wearing out not only his staff, but the press are even bellyaching that he's doing too much. And yet he's fresh every time you see him. So I give him a lot of credit. If, if he's not well, boy, He's sure fooling a lot of people. Yeah, he seems to have that boundless energy, and he's used that as a point of contrast with others who aspire to the office, including Mrs. Clinton. Brad Blakeman, tonight from Washington, and Amy from Atlanta. Amy Kramer, we thank you. Always good to have you both. Now, when we come back, Goldman Sachs is banning its executives from donating to a certain campaign. Guess which campaign that might be? Judy Kurtz from The Hill joins us when Newsmax Prime continues. So keep it right here.